Nothing says spring like a park in bloom. Many parks, however, are cultivated with popular plants not native to the area. How we define native is plants that grow without human intervention within the eco-regions of New England. Founded in 1900, the nonprofit Native Plant Trust is America's first plant conservation organization. Its best known attraction, Garden in the Woods in Framingham, home to diverse plant life curated from all over New England. As we're seeing, unfortunately, through many, many studies now, the decline in insects, the decline in diversity and species richness in birds, all of this is being tied to the loss of biodiversity of native plants. We have ramps. Uli Lormer is director of horticulture here. This 45-acre botanic garden normally receives 20,000 visitors every year. Spring is high season at Garden in the Woods. You see it and you hear it. We have some naturally occurring wetlands. There's a pond, there's a swamp, and a little bog section, a meadow that are all accessible by this trail. Between 2,000 and 3,000 native plant species flourish here. This pretty little flower is called squirrel corn. Squirrels like to dig it up and eat this, which looks just like a kernel of corn. Rare blooms include swamp pink and trillium, which can grow for seven to nine years before it flowers. We have a nationally accredited collection of trilliums. In eastern North America, we have over 35, 36 different species. One of those species is a prankster with a peculiar name. So this flower right here is the stinking Benjamin. Oh. <laughs> and it is true to its name. The stinking Benjamin smells like wet dog or rotting meat, depending on who you ask. And the whole point is that uh, this is a flower that wants to be pollinated by flies, fungus gnats, and beetles that would normally be attracted to something dead in the forest. You look at it and it's amazing and it's beautiful, but it's not something that you would want to get too, too close to. Or fragrant, native plants all have a purpose and must be protected, says Lorimer. Why are natives better than just any old garden plants? The idea is that the plants that evolved here, they co-evolved with really specific relationships with insects and birds and other, uh, other wildlife. And in order to keep them alive and around, you have to give them what they have evolved with. Botanists and arborists at the Native Plant Trust study this issue constantly, says Executive Director Debbie Edelstein. Nationwide, about 25% of the plants, as in New England, about 25% of the plants are, are uh, rare and endangered and declining. In New England, there are 389 species that are globally or regionally rare. Mostly it's because of man-made changes to the landscape, um, whether it's development or abundance of deer, trampling, climate change. To help combat these problems, Native Plant Trust built a seed bank at Nisami Farm in the western Massachusetts town of Waitley. We collect seeds with permits and permission, um, collect seeds of the rare and endangered plants, and then we have them. In case they die out on the landscape, we can restore them. Lorimer says we should all think holistically about gardening at home. We should be asking, how can I support the greatest amount of life in my garden rather than what do I want to see, what's just prettiest for me as a human? Of course, we would love it if people used only native plants, but using some in your garden is a step in the right direction. And good news about Garden in the Woods. It is once again open to the public. Admission is limited for now and by advance ticket only. And if you're patient enough to cultivate some trillium, rest assured, they do not all smell like the stinking Benjamin. Up next, the farm rush.